Hi everyone and welcome to the Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now. Let me just pull up the PowerPoint. There we go. Uh, episode number 23. Uh, today we're going to talk about, let me just do like that, uh, how to <coughs> import CSV file uh, using import set tables and data source. And in this case it's just uh, something I stumbled up myself that if everything is fine it works like a charm but what i'm going to show you is that if you have a csv file that the header row isn't row number one then suddenly you have a lot of issues trying to get that into the import table and the data set and all that stuff for those who don't know me my name is uh, goran lundquist aka the Watch witch doctor i've uh, been working in with service now for like five years now almost uh, started out as a customer went into the, the partner sphere and now since april i've been working at service now as an internal uh, developer trying to get the service now to have use service now as good as possible as well i uh, love the community trying really trying to be active there right now there isn't that much time sadly trying to keep the youtube channel up as well uh, been an MP for three years in a row. Uh, sadly, I can't be next year since I'm a employee of service now, but someone else will be that. So, uh, <coughs> you have my contact details on my. I think it's that way. If you like to to catch up, just hit me on LinkedIn, YouTube, or something like that. I am on Twitter, but I can't really say that I'm that active. Uh, easiest is to connect me with on LinkedIn, I guess. And I also wrote a book that came out January this year where I tried to, to take all my knowledge uh, and jump that into a book to help you guys not doing the same mistakes as I did. It's on Amazon, you can buy it as an ebook and paperback as well. Here are a few bullet points where you can see what is inside of that. And actually, one of the things that I um, learned or using today is from the book so i actually went and got my book <laughs> to remember how i did it last time so what are we going to look for we're going to look how to handle csv files where the head row is not the first row i'm going to show you some examples how and why there's and how does actually load data works if you have been familiar with that because that one if you use load data, it's not an issue. You can just specify which header it is and it works. And then I'm going to show you how your integrations can handle that. For example, if you are using an email integration. So let's skip the PowerPoints. Let me get rid of that one. There we go. And after this, or when this YouTube is actually on YouTube, or when this video is on YouTube, you will let me fetch, let me just fix something so it's easier for me to see what I'm actually showing. I'll do it like that and soon. I don't know why this window went away from me. There we go. Where is the mouse? There we go. So <coughs> When you can watch this video on YouTube, there will be an episode 23 here on my G GitHub account where you can go in and download all the codes. So you don't really need to focus on what I'm writing or try to copy it. It will be downloadable here. So, quick tip. Um, on your PDI, I recommend not using admin as the account you're playing around with. Even if it's easy and fun, uh, just create another account and make, give them all the rights because if you suddenly accidentally like check the web access only on your admin account then you can't log in anymore if i accidentally do that on goran i can actually go back use the admin account to fix my account and you don't need to try to contact service now and we will help you of course but it's faster to do that that way so let's log in so Basically, our issue is, I'll show you, we have a CSV file where the header row, in this case, is on line number three or row number three. So 
we want to import this one into ServiceNow. So let's go back. And when we're talking about load data, you can go into load data. And from here, which is quite simple, if you already have a table, you can use the existing table, like I have, or you can say create and just create the table at the same time. Let's just take my table. The source is then, of course, a file. I select my file and it's uh, that one. And I just define that header row that's number three. I hit submit. And voila, you can see 13 inset, inserts. And if I go to the, the table, you can see that the data is there. Actually, two times because I actually did one try earlier just yes, so you won't see me fail over and over again or something like that. So it works. But let's go to the data source that was created. And <coughs> sorry about that. We were going to the data source, not that it was created. I'm going to show you now. How does it work with the data source? If you look at the data source, you no longer can see, there isn't any row, header row or something like that. But if we go into this one, I'll just do show XML and I'll see where it pops up on the right one. You can see that it says header row tree still exists and this is what happens when you create a table there is a data source but already since I have created it we're going to directly so somehow it's saved so my first thought was okay when I create the data source I can just add header row 3 or 5 or whatever it is and that will fix sadly it won't because what happens when you load the data it manipulates the attachment so if I download this one you will actually see let me just download it somewhere I'll just save it here and open up you can see that there isn't any row 1 or 2 anymore it has deleted those and just put the row number that you said was the head row on top so actually, when the data source is being created, there isn't any empty rows above. Because if I would do something like this, if I remove that, uh, let's see if this works. I haven't tested everything. This should work. So this is the one with the new, the one that has the empty spaces. And I'll just test load. Boom, we have an error. Suddenly it doesn't really work. If I instead do the same thing, and delete that one, and update that one. I was trying to think which is the correct one. So now we have that one. And it works. So when I upload the one without spaces, it works. This means that the functionality that load data has, that actually takes and remove rows, is not something we can use directly. Uh, I'll try to look in the back end now that I'm in service now, but it felt a lot of work to try to build that back end functionality in service now because this one is back, back end, where you mainly can touch within service now UI. So, what did I do? In this case, we are going to do the import through an email. So it's coming inbound. So I have created an inbound action. <coughs> and I'm not going to go through all these functionalities. I hope you understand how inbound email actions works and stuff like that. There we go. So basically I can say that and this is of course you probably will have a little bit 
better filter and so on. So this one just right now just takes everything that comes in, creates a data sort out of it. And of course, subject starts with episode 23. So I actually was a little bit curious, but I'm not going to do this in email because somehow it didn't fetch emails. I don't know why, but let's not troubleshoot that right now. So action, that's where the action happens. So this is what we need to do. So basically we need to do the same stuff that um, the load data do. And to do that, we're actually going to fetch the attachment and recreate the attachment and save that on the data source instead, just like the load data actually works. So I just put in a name on the data source. Then I go in and fetch that attachment. In this case, I know that the emails I'm getting, there is only one attachment. So I don't need to find out which one and so on. Um, I save that sysid for that uh, attachment. Then I use something called the glide sys attachment get content stream. Uh, and let me just go and show you. You have it under server uh, glide sys attachments and get content stream. You also have get content, but in my case, Sometimes the attachment was actually above five megabyte, meaning that get content doesn't really work. But get content stream, I can't say there isn't any limit because there probably is, but it's pretty much higher. And as you can see, we have the get content stream. So we get is is that content stream coming for us? And then we use an API called the Glide Text Reader. That actually means that we can read the context as well. So let's find that one. Glide Text Reader. And here you can see that I am actually reusing a lot of the code in the example, which is quite good. You just go to documentation and reuse and tweak that example that already exists. Uh, <clears throat> so what I do is I go in and look as long as I use the read line to go to the next line over and over again. So if the reader isn't null, meaning I got to the end of it, I will continue the while loop. Then is the length of that row, if that's more than one, uh, which means that the first two won't happen, then I'll use the new string variable to just put in whatever value there is on that line and add a line break. And by that, I'm building the whole new string, the CC file. And that is uh, from the example as well down here now that I got from the book as well. When that's done, I create a new record with the write, put it in the current, which is the data source record. I actually renamed it just to know that I actually got the new one because I have some issues and that's the reason why I'm throwing in an event down here. And that issue is that if the attachment was too big, the deletion of the old attachment, because of course I don't want the old one, happened before actually the whole content stream somehow was done. So sometimes I got the wrong attachment and so on. So in this case, I just put it in, then I actually fetch, of course, the old file name, put in that is a CSV, and of course the content. Then I throw in an event saying that this import is done, or create this event, this object, and then I throw in the old attachment ID so I know which attachment is I'm going to delete. So if I go to event, you can see, remember, 
always register events that you are going to use if you create them yourself. So I just created this one and pretty much just say what's it used for, where is it fired from uh, and so on. Then I have something called a script action which is code that you trigger on specific events. And let's find that one. There it is. So you can see that it triggers on the YouTube event. And what it does is it goes in and delete the old attachment. Then I have created two custom script includes because in my case I'm doing this in a scoped application and some of this stuff needs to be run in the global scope otherwise it won't work so that's why basically put everything into the import set we'll go through the different things and then transform run the import set with the transform apps and this script include is also available on the github if you like to use it so let's go over to the script include So basically, uh, you get uh, uh, will get a few more stuff that you can reuse if you want. We are looking for the load import set. In this case, we have stuff to where we can create import sets. We can change the state of the import set. We can transform the import set. We have the load one. And for this one, we're throwing in the data source. So the data source that has the attachment that shall be loaded. And here you can see just simple code. You've probably seen this code on other, other blog posts. Uh, I think I got some of this stuff from a, a really good post from, I think it was Michael Ritchie, I think. You can find it on the community otherwise. Uh, where pretty much says create the import set and then I return the record, the import set record, the whole object not only the city or something like that. When that's done, I go in and like to transform it. So in that case, we're just needing to the city. Uh, I have other code where I actually need other fields on the import set record. So that's why I'm throwing back the whole object instead of a lot of parameters or, or something. So you get the sysid and I'll think the transform and the same thing here we're pretty much just running and this is a way to run and here you can actually see that this example is actually running the, the sub integration that I built um, and I won't go through all the different stuff but here it is and that's how it works uh, just to go through, just to see what other stuff there is. I have also some issues where I actually have dates coming in like this. And I needed to revert, convert them to this. I don't know if there's any easier way. I just throw in something like that to replace the data. Uh, <coughs> then I have some other stuff that I, I needed to, to do in a scoped version as well. But just feel free. I think I've been good enough to document at least uh, what they're doing. So hopefully it will help you. So if you need it, go to the GitHub. You will find the episode 23 there. Hopefully this will help someone that has the same issues as I have. Uh, if you have any questions, just write it in the YouTube comments and I'll try to reply when they pop up. Okay, thanks for your time. See you around.